buttons have been clipped. We own. Welcome. Hey, everybody. Hey. I'm Whitney. I'm Amy. This is on The, the Haunt. Haunt, a paranormal podcast with a little comedy, a little yeah. weirdness thrown in. <laughs> Do you want to hear about our, 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 like, Owl movement? yes, <laughs> or, um, you know, our, our household woes? <laughs> Well, you've come to the right place. Our apparently unpopular liberalism. <laughs> My devil wokeness. <laughs> so funny still. <laughs> Our Equal irrational rights. like want of books to be made available. <laughs> then you've come to the right place. Yes. Do you love books? <laughs> all books? I feel like, and even if you don't love all books, do you respect other people's rights to love whatever books like, they want? You know, like, this is a free freaking country. Read the books that you want. <laughs> I'm sorry, if you take away all the books about gay people in schools, that doesn't mean kids aren't gonna be gay because they're already exactly. gay. And baby, I was born that way. You the know? community is hugely underrepresented in all works of literature, anyways. So. Like the That's five books, 0.0001% of the books or that. Yeah, it's just, it's hilarious mm. how, like, afraid of gay people <laughs> people can be. It's like, they don't want you. No. <laughs> You're safe. <laughs> you are 100%. Their gaydar picks up on your fear of gay people. <laughs> they probably think it's funny. I would. <laughs> You know, they're not, like, coming for you. Gosh, no. that's, like, the opposite of that community. <laughs> Peace and love and, like, Have you pride. never watched a Pride Parade? Yeah, go to a drag show. Exactly. They're not going to chase you down. And actually, I don't want to, like, make a sweeping generalization either. I know some very masculine gay men yeah. as well. Yeah, they're that's... not just trying to chase you down, though, no, and make you not. gay. They're finding other gay people yeah. to love. <laughs> they're very content in their relationships. Yes, like... Oh my God, it's so dumb. They're not trying to make you ugly old Republican senator. <laughs> no, they're a lover. Come on, they're like you. I my you must pins. be mine. You're mine. I love your little head and your tiny buzz cut. You, Ted Cruz, MGT, and your fur coat. Oh, Ted you Cruz must looks, come to my love. Den. Looks like he's about to have a heart attack. God, sir, eat a vegetable. <laughs> Why do you always look like, like you're sweating? I was about to say that. Why is he always so hot? Your it's hair like, is sweating. Your face. It kind of glistens like lunch yes, meat. It really does. Wow. Are you okay? And then the new speaker of the house looks like he smokes about three packs of cigarettes a day. Oh, my God. They it's also great. have something on TikTok. It's like bad lip reading. And they yes. <laughs> And they do you, weird cardigan man or whatever. Yes. They do, yes, and they do like their roll call. Yes. I farted. And then, yes. and then they're like, she's like, I didn't need to know that. Yes. You know, it's like so great. It it's, really is. Oh my God. It's amazing. And people are like not paying attention. Oh yeah. Someone had a kid. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> okay. You brought your child. Is it bring your kid to work yeah. day in Congress? You make 100 times more money than me. And you get a lifetime pension for serving two years. Can you? Yeah. And, and serving is really. And 100 vacation days a year. It's so. really um, putting it. Uh, yeah. I can't talk. No. <laughs> My right. anger. Um, Angry women. Well, we talked about our reading habits last episode. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch a documentary on Hulu this week. I mean, it wasn't like anything riveting, and I'd heard the story before, but it was about like the the guy that uh, basically reined in all these kids from Sarah Lawrence. Oh, um, I saw into that his cult. I never heard of that um, before. Is that on Netflix? Hulu. Oh, okay. Like Is it Stolen Youth or something? I saw someone post about that. Yeah, was it, it was, good? I was. I mean, it wasn't because people were like, "This is the best thing I've ever watched." Oh, and I, was I like, mean, no, oh. I wouldn't go that far. Okay. But it was really interesting because one of the girls that he m manipulated and brainwashed had went to Harvard and then Columbia Medical School on full ride scholarship. Wow. She came from nothing. Her parents are non English speaking immigrants. Um, she grew up at public schools in the wow. Bronx. Um, and so her and her brother were both, like, sucked into this guy's cult. But she 
had just wrapped up her residency Mm -hmm. in Los Angeles to become a psychiatrist. And all she had to do was take her exams. But she got this guy talked her into coming to New York or wherever he was and then just completely What's the cult about? Him. Like it I mean him. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean and, that's a dumb And question. you just got to it's not cult like Jonestown or something, yeah. but a cult is more of like a verb. Think yeah. of cult as a verb, like how yeah. he manipulated and brainwashed this small group of college students Why? to uh he was the end he game? was extorting money from their families. Oh my god. Yeah. It was, Ugh. it was so gross. Yeah. Like, it, his daughter was friends with these kids. And, and his like, daughter knew it was a cult or knew it was no, bad? No, she, he was in prison. And oh. when he got out of prison, she was like, my dad needs a place to stay. And so he was staying on, like, university housing with these kids before he got an apartment. And then Ew. Had them all got, yeah. The whole thing's just crazy. I don't like that. But he's just great. His name is Larry. Like, we're going to follow Larry around. <laughs> but it's just, and he basically made them think they had memories. Like, convinced them. Convinced this girl scary. her parents had poisoned her. And they were sending people to kill her. And... And she it's was a frightening. Harvard and Columbia trained yeah, just psychiatrist. So anyone could be. So don't pass judgment on people. Yeah, anyone who, can be anyone manipulated. Can be manipulated. That's Absolutely. scary. Ooh. So I did watch that. That looks. That sounds good. Yeah, that's that's it was something. Alley. I've watched everything. So I've watched all the things. <laughs> I really have. It's embarrassing. <laughs> You haven't watched Whatever. Love is Blind. So. I mean, I'm already paying for the streaming service. You might as well so. watch it all. Exactly. I'm not out spending money elsewhere. There you go. Sit there with my uh, sea salt and pepper skinny pop and oh, yeah. go to town. I love They used so to good. make a... I don't know now. I can't remember, but they used to make a flavor, but it was so good, and then they quit making it. Why well, so you got to do that? Yeah. You know? Apparently, I was the only one eating it, but yeah. whatever. I love the big bags of popcorn. Yeah. You just can't go wrong. No. You know? And they're, you know, you don't feel guilty eating it. <laughs> no. Because, you know. And my dog doesn't like it, so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> she, uh, if you don't follow me on social media, I would posted, well, last week, I mm-hmm. guess, because we're in the past and this is the future. I always got to remember that. But my son came home from Mizzou for President's Day weekend, because, again, we're in the past. <laughs> you are in the future. You are in the future. And he had made like a pound of goose jerky. <laughs> Whatever. He, I mean, what here's if, the thing. He wants I have to always, eat it. My kids are avid hunters and I always insult them. That is totally fine if you eat what you right. kill, if you're not just right. killing for sport. And right. they really have lived up to that. Yeah. So I'm proud of them for that. But anyways, the dog kept running downstairs and then back upstairs and downstairs. I'm like, what is she doing? No one's even down there. And then Jamie was sitting eating dinner last night. He's like, and I just fed the dog and her, you know, her dog food, <laughs> as one does when they have a dog. And Jamie's like, this dog has got like a piece of beef jerky over here. I'm like, no, she, I'm like, no one has beef jerky, Jamie. You're hallucinating. You're, he's like, I'm telling you, I just saw she has a piece of beef jerky. I'm like, no, she, I just fed her her dog food. He's like, whatever. <laughs> so Poor Jamie. Yeah. She had went downstairs in Brecken's room rifled through his duffel bag she smelled that out got the like big ziploc you know, freezer bag of jerky out had eaten he said probably three-fourths of it so and she then ate through the probably chewed the bag open yeah, yeah. with her three remaining teeth or whatever she has How left after is she old eating jerky, jerky? she jerky still is- eats rocks <laughs> but uh, and then she vomited all over brecken's room oh that's yeah that's bad. It is bad. And then this morning, you could tell she just did not feel good. Oh. Like, I, I, because like, every I morning I get up and feed her her dog food and she just kept looking at it. And I'm like, I don't Eat even it or feel not. sorry for you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. But eating jerky with three teeth, that's rough. Well, she's got a little more than three teeth. I was being oh. kind of sarcastic. Okay. There, but she's still, she had what? I don't even remember how many teeth she had pulled a lot, like yeah. eight or yeah. something. Because eating jerky so. is hard. Yeah, it is. With a full set of teeth. Yeah, goose jerky. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, whatever. I mean, he's eating it. He made exactly. it. That's cool that he made it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it was probably super spicy, too, knowing oh. him. So. Oh, God. <laughs> Your dog's like... Well, at least she... I don't know if vomiting's better than... 
yeah. pooping. And I don't Probably. think it could hurt her. Yeah, I mean, no, it's just an dogs animal. can eat. Goose yeah, turkey. she could eat that in the wild. Yeah, if she was a wild dog, bug, she ate like can you Drano imagine? or something. A bug in the wild, she would be dead on day one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that goose would eat she her. She could never survive in the wild. <laughs> well, that's why I always tell her in the mornings, like there's a big pack of coyotes out by where we live, and I can hear them getting close to the house. I'm like, get inside. You look like a snack to a coyote. Yeah, get in here. I hate coyotes. So. <sighs> Yeah, we hear them at our house there's too. so many predators, <laughs> and my dog is not very big. No, but anywho, shall we? We shall. Okay, I'm going to be talking about. I've read none of this, so I don't know what it's about. The unread, the mystery of the Voynich manuscript. The what manuscript? Voynich. Okay. V o i n i c h. Okay, and this is from the New Yorker. Ooh, fancy. It was an article <laughs> written by Reed Johnson. <laughs> Johns? Oh. Johnson. Oh, I was like, oh, I get called Johnson a lot. I'm sure. I thought this was your people. Name. And I just copied and pasted this article because it had a limit. You know, I always want to, like, it. have a subscription to the New Yorker <laughs> and be that. I'm like, I would never read that. No. But it seems cool, you know? Oh, this is my... I read the New Yorker. Mm, I just got my little... How did I swipe these off and make them blurrier? What did I do? Do you need do? a cleaner? I have cleaner. Mm, I've got like a little... Cl- oh, I have an actual cloth. <laughs> <laughs> Amy's cleaning don't her they, glasses. Can't they make glasses so they don't smudge? I mean, you, we put a man on the moon. You'd think... Is it really that hard? Elon Musk, you're not doing like, nothing. Like, if there's anything on the that. planet you need to not have smudges on it, it's glasses. Yeah. You're... Particularly my bifocals. Try to see. Because I got to be able to do this and that. This and <laughs> bob my head up and down. Uh, uh, I can see. Far away, up oh, close. Far away, thing. up close. I feel like I do that a lot when I wear these. But that, whatever. I mean, that's what, that's what they're what made they for. That's Thanks, what they do. Ben Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> what a guy. How do you make that? I don't know. I don't know. Science. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't he also make, like, electricity? It's Thomas Edison. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who wow. the key? I'm so in- no, Ben Franklin had the key and the kite. Oh, Thomas Edison invented the light, light bulb. bulb. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I was going to... Okay. I damn. accept your apology. I was going to be proud of myself for knowing something for once and then screwed it up. <laughs> I, I just felt dumb, but I'm used to <laughs> feeling that way, so it's fine. Me too. <laughs> well, <right>. wow. <laughs> Let's go. They, what about the key and the kite? <laughs> What a dangerous experiment. Very dangerous. And how did he know that would, like, How did he not die? Lightning? Well, how I guess did... he probably had, had seen lightning strike other metal things. And how did he know, like, that's... How did he yeah. take do that and make electricity? Yeah, I don't know. There's no Good lightning question. in electricity. <laughs> no. Like, what? But then... Is he, like... He m- investigated the energy that was I suppose. Created. Is he, like, re- like, replicating that somehow? I, again, you always ask me questions that is there, you can't possibly is there like a little, I have the Is there like a little to. hamster in everyone's house? It's like... Well, Carter is going to rank it next year to study Thank becoming you. an electrician. Okay. So Hopefully there's a history upon class. Upon the completion of his That just tells studies. him, you know? <laughs> yes. Like hopefully. how he did it. Carter. You'd want to know. That's your Someone field. Someone comes in, dresses Ben Franklin, and gives like a whole presentation. Oh, you great. With the like fuzzy neck thing. <laughs> and like the hat. The hat. <laughs> and he, I feel like he was bald here. Yeah, but they had like a yeah. mullet. The, yeah. Not even a mullet. Just, just like a long, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh my well, God. What is this neck mean? thing? The frilly thing? Yeah, it's like lace. Know. It was just styling in those And his days. socks. And his like yes. knee pants. Yes, his Peddlers, my grandma used to call yes, those. Yes, those are cute. Cigarette <laughs> pants. <laughs> Not his, though. I mean, they... Pet, pedal pushers. Yeah. That's what she called yeah, them. Yeah, weird little shoes. <laughs> yeah. like a Very little, pointy. Yeah, like a metal clasp. Yeah, I hope your... Wow. Well, I hope your toes really, like, come together at a point. Ah, uh, the old-fashioned... <laughs> yes. I almost said Puritans. Were they Puritans? Anyway. I I think that predated. I, yeah. I, I don't know. Anyway. Anyways, here we go. American history. Wow. Let's go to the Voynich manuscript, shall we? We shall. Stored away in the rare book library at Yale University is a late medieval manuscript written in a cramped but punctilious script and illustrated with lively line drawings that have been painted over at times crudely, rude, with washes <laughs> of color. These illustrations range from the fanciful legions of heavy-headed flowers 
that bear no relation to any earthly variety. Well, that's art. To the bizarre, <laughs> right. naked, and possibly pregnant women. Possibly Polity. pregnant. Don't speculate. No. no, ever, ever. We all speculated about Rihanna, not. though. I mean. Well, true. But she was, like, rubbing her belly and yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, so. one doesn't do that no. if you're not pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're, Unless you're trying saying to you're hung- the poop out. <laughs> or you're like signaling you're hungry. Yes. That. <laughs> I've never once done that. No, Amy. <laughs> hungry. <laughs> I'm Chunk. I just know her <laughs> cues. Rihanna. Your visual. Oh, you know what's... Oh. Ever... I just... Again. Back to TikTok. Hello. Um, someone... Some old man was on TikTok and he was like, Have you noticed all of the devil imagery we've been getting lately? Rihanna, red outfit. Sam Smith, red outfit with horns. And I forget what the other thing was. And I'm like, good. <laughs> the Illuminati. <laughs> like, stop. It's like back in the 80s when they were, or 70s, where it was like, if you play this record backwards. Yes. It's, Helter Skelter. Yeah, like, <laughs> What? It's hilarious. Why are you I'm like, ruining your records doing that? that right, and it's really like, cool. no, there's there's no one in a basement no. wearing robes being and like, okay, we're going to ask Sam Smith, yes. the recording artist, <laughs> Sam Smith, to wear a red suit. He also wore that inflatable black latex I, suit to the Brit Awards. What are you, where are you going with that? That was the <laughs> worst thing I've ever seen Why would you want to make your life? lips look larger? I <laughs> I'm so confused. How did you get in and out of... What if you had to pee? He had to have had, like, a catheter or something on, right? <laughs> or someone that helps him, I guess. It's. I'm just like, I don't get fashion. I don't get fashion either. That is weird. Yeah. <laughs> it looked no, weird. It was know. American Horror Story, you know? Yes, it really was. Oh, my gosh. I just saw Lady Gaga's going to be in... She's playing Harley Quinn in the new Joker movie. Okay. I was like, I see that. Yeah. She can... Okay. Good for her. I'm excited. Sam Smith, I love you. <laughs> I hate how the gays, though, are mad at him for being overweight or, like, rude about it. I don't know. Yeah. That's, like, a whole thing. And I'm like, oh. he's beautiful. And he makes great Body songs. Body positive. It's Unholy different. is a great, catchy tune. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> Move on. All right. Shall we? <laughs> we shall. Away from black inflatable yes. latex <laughs> outfits. So I'm gonna get or maybe you that's in For here. your birthday. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, to the bizarre, naked, and possibly pregnant women frolicking in what looked like amusement park water slides from the 15th century. Wait, what? That's in the... That's dr- painted? That's drawn in this book. And this is at Yale. Yes. That's so cool. That your college could have some, like, weird, yeah. mysterious... Artifact. Umsel had none of that. <laughs> I'm sure WIU did not either. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not in the curriculum library where I worked. Right. <laughs> Sad. With their distended bellies, stick-like arms and legs, and earnest expressions, the naked figures have a whimsical quality, though their anatomy is frankly rendered something unusual for the period. The manuscript's botanical drawings are no less strange. The plants appear to be chimerical, hmm. combining incompatible parts from different species, even different kingdoms. Tentac- and a genus. Tentacled <laughs> balls of roots take form of animals or of human organs. In one case, sprouting two disembodied heads with vexed expressions. But perhaps the oddest thing about this book is that no one has ever read it. Why? That's because the book, called the Voynich Manuscript, after the rare book dealer who stumbled upon it a century ago, is written in an unknown script. Oh. With an alphabet that appears nowhere other than in its pages. <gasps> the writing system is oddly beautiful, full of looping and fluid curves. A series of distinctive letters called gallows for the resemblance to a hangman's scaffold are sometimes conjoined with other letters or have mm-hmm. been embellished with elaborate curly cues by a scribe. Give it to those people that, um, the, that husband and wife who decoded the, you know, the, um, oh my God. The serial killer Zodiac oh, letters yeah. over their Sunday there coffee or whatever. <laughs> Weird. So no one well, I'm can... sure it's been, I mean, well, we'll learn more, but I can I'm only thinking... imagine it's been so you just Surely. completely scoured over by all sorts And you of think academia. someone, unless it's yeah. just completely nonsensical. Well, I'm thinking maybe that's it. 
What these glyphs signify, whether they represent phonetic information or numeric values or something else is anyone's guess. Judging by its illustrations, the manuscript seems to be a compendium of knowledge related to the natural world, including a section about herbs, a section apparently detailing biological processes, various zodiac charts, and pages devoted to the movements of celestial bodies, such as the transit of the mood across the pietus. Yes, the yes. pietus. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever I that is. <laughs> the writing flows smoothly. Hesitation from one letter. Yeah, it, that's even underlined in blue on Google. From one letter to the next. Based on the handwriting, it's thought to be the work of at least two and as many as eight practice scribes and possibly required years of labor. I how they know that. Just like differences in the writing, I suppose. Probably, huh. yeah. They don't know what it says, but they can identify that different people have wrote it. Handwriting. I first learned of the Voynich in 2010. I was completing an MFA in fiction at the University of Virginia and attem- anticipating dismal job prospects. Yeah. Yeah, we get What that. are you going to do with that? Yeah. <laughs> Be an author? Should, should have chosen a broader yeah. major. Had decided to try my hand at a Dan Brown style thriller. <laughs> oh, he's writing one. I guess. Or he's reading one. It was to be about Book M, a likely Rosicrucian encyclopedia of arcane wisdom written in the early 15th century in magical language and letters by Christian Rosencruz and the seven other founders of the Order. I don't know what any of this means. The protagonist of the novel discovers that the Voynich, which dates from the same time, is in fact the long-vanished Book M, whose secrets will, if discovered... Well, you know the plot. No, I do not. I spent a sweltering summer in Virginia trying to learn how to write a pulpy thriller. It's a lot harder than it looks. You have a master's in fine arts. While devoting more and more of my time to researching the Voynich, I made an electric facsimile of the book for my iPad using high result. No one cares. He made a what? I (laughs) have no idea what that means. Uh, Let's see. I made an electric work, Flipping something. through the pages, captivated by the smallest details in the margins. A tiny drawing of a corpse holding its stomach next to a discarded morsels of food Weird. on the recto of folio 66 sent me rushing to the university library to look up poisonous plants, which led me to research medieval pharmacopias, which led to trade routes between Europe and India crossed by Arab merchants. Oh. Okay. By the end of the summer, my vo- novel was no ma- near to completion, but a breakthrough on deciphering the Voynich seemed closer than ever. You need a job, sir. Yes. Well, how are you <laughs> living your life? Yeah, how are you paying your bills? I wasn't the only one who believed that he could crack the book's secrets. The first person said to have owned the manuscript was the Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II, who reportedly was intrigued enough to buy it from its previous owner for 600 ducats. <laughs> around $90,000 in today's oh. money. According to the manuscript's radiocarbon dating, the book was already nearly two centuries old at the time of his purchase. Rudolph was a devotee of the unusual. He collected dwarfs and stocked an entire... Excuse me, what? <laughs> Are they alive? Army of giants. Wait, know. a zombie of giants? That's just army a... oh. of giants. What? It says an entire regiment. What's his home his like? <laughs> I have no idea. And his fixation on alchemy and the occult made Prague under his rule a center for both mystical and proto-scientific inquiry. Weird. Okay. One prominent figure in Rolf's court was Jacobus Horaki de Tepenek, the imperial pharmacist, keeper of the royal gardens, and the next owner of the Voynich Manuscript. Tepenik had reportedly earned the emperor's favor by curing him of some grave disease. An elixir he manufactured and sold was so in demand that he became the Renaissance equivalent of a snake oil baron, <laughs> rich enough that even the emperor turned to him for loans. Nearly everything about the Voynich manuscript has been contested over the years, and its past ownership is no exception. But a decade ago, 
the indefatigable Voynich expert Renee Zandvergen, on whose research I've drawn heavily here, <laughs> was browsing a set of archives from the 17th century when he stumbled across a letter that identified the manuscript's next owner, George Beresh, an alchemist in Prague in the first half of the 17th century who had spent 20 years attempting to decipher the script. Wow, what a long period oh of your life. Oh my gosh, and then you don't do it. Yeah. Man. Wah, wah. Yeah. Despairing of a solution, the alchemist had sent a few sample pages to the cryptolytic celebrity of the day, a Jesuit polymath in Rome named Athesatius Kircher, who famously and incorrectly, as it turned out, claimed to have decoded the hieroglyphics of ancient Egypt. <laughs> lie, lie, pants on fire. <laughs> The manuscript intri- intrigued Kircher, and he tried to convince Baresh to part with it. Baresh refused. Instead, it fell to Baresh's friend Marcy, who inherited the manuscript when Baresh died, to pass on the rest of the manuscript to the Jesuit scholar. Marcy was himself a well-known scientist and served as physician to the Holy Roman Emperor, despite having once been branded a heretic for speculations on the science of conception and development of the human embryo. Not a heretic. <laughs> In the letter accompanying the Voynich manuscript, Marcy describes his late friend's obsession with cracking the script. To its deciphering, he devoted unflagging toil, as is apparent from attempts of his life, which I send you herewith, and he relinquished hope only Aww. with life. The end. So that wasn't a very long one, but that's okay. It's just yeah. like, so it's like no one knows what it, it says. What it says. Or what it's about. And why Why did they write it in such an undecipherable quote? Right. Oh, it must be something pretty weird. Intent. Yeah, maybe it's just saying. Telling some sort of, it's the secrets to the world. Yes. Or just the secret starring Julia Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> What that lady on, I've been listening to the um, bling ring. Oh, yes, when she forced him to watch The Secret. Did on you the road. remember what? I watched that show. Yeah, I it was watched on. it. It just came out a few months ago, I feel like. It wasn't that oh, long Oh, no, no, no. I mean, the show. Oh, those, the movie. I think. No, no, no. The show those girls were on. Oh, pretty wild. Way Sorry. back in like 2005. Gotcha. I'm like, oh, the movie. I mean, I watched all oh, those oh, the too. Movie. Oh, the, I think we saw the movie together. I'm sure we actually. did. <laughs> but yeah, I remember watching that show and being like, uh, <laughs> yeah. You guys okay? <laughs> yeah, pretty screwed up. Okay, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about New Mexico's penitentiary. This is from Mysterious Universe, an article by Brett Swanser <laughs> from February 10th, not 2023. Brett <laughs> not Brett Michaels. Every rose does have its thorn. But Who not apparently Mrs. dated Hunted. Pamela Anderson. <coughs> I didn't realize that. Like the first, <coughs> like way back, yeah. I watched her show. Yeah, and I cried. And, it was so yeah, sad. She seems like a genuinely kind person. I know. And she really got screwed over and, with the whole thing. I know. And all those, like, every time she's on a talk show, and I'm just like, yeah. ugh. Well, did you see where so she, like, gross. texted Tommy Lee and was like, hey, I just want you to know I talk about our relationship and this upcoming thing, and you really were the love of my life. And He's remarried, I too. I saw. Yeah, so then his wife, like, leaked it. It's like, grow up. I mean, she's, like, 12. She probably doesn't know any better, but and it's like okay, like, what are you what are leaking? You like, I didn't none think of that any, is a f- nothing she said was like right crossing a line. Yeah, she was just, I would appreciate getting a heads up. Hey, yeah. I'm going to discuss our relationship. Yeah, and she did not portray him in a bad light, not at all. And he's the father of her children, right? So chill. And I mean, anything Brittany for a long or that did he portray him in a bad light or things he did and like yeah. served time. He for. portrayed himself in a bad exactly. light. Exactly. She did not have to do that. God, I cannot imagine being married to him. Like, wow. And then Kid Rock, I was like, no, Ew, no, yeah, no, no. That was a Ew. lack of judgment. <laughs> She's just got a type. A lapse in judgment. She got a type. Lack. She's got a type. It's just, you know, yeah. is what it is. Yeah. A little bit dirty looking. Yeah. <laughs> a little grungy. Well, and I think that's because she was taught that's what mm-hmm. you're worthy of. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. We yep. love you, Pamela. We do. She's so sweet. And not a stitch of makeup. You go, girl. Yeah. You're beautiful. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Let's see. I need to get her memoir. I don't know what this is starting with. It looks like, you know, they always start with like stupid crap. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Kind of like this podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly like this podcast. One common feature of the many haunted places in our world 
is that they really like these people really want to be writers. Yes. You know, they probably have an MFA. From they are whipping out Yale. Their everything they got. Yes. This is their arsenal yes. of literary like, okay, device. How do I start this? <laughs> oh my god, here we go. Is that they're often imbued okay. with a dark past, saturated <laughs> in stories of pain, suffering, and death. I'm like rolling my eyes so hard. I'm usually saturated, saturated in my own my sweat. body is just like rejecting my will to live. Oh my god. Well that took a dark turn. Sorry. It's like just it's like freaking give up hanging your body. I really should. Oh my god. Listen to your body, they always say. Well maybe not in this case. No. These factors seem to ensure that tales of hauntings and paranormal phenomena are etched upon them, this suffering and death somehow managing to seep into their very being to make them well springs of the odd. This is like, you're trying so hard, Brett. <laughs> or Brent. Brent. Ugh. One sort of place that seems to be very at home with this context are haunted prisons, which are often mm -hmm. stained with tragedy and death. And one of the most haunted of these has managed to become well known for its morbid past and its many tales of aggressive specters mm. and spectral specters. things. Yeah, the spectral aggressors <laughs> and the spectral tigers. As with many purportedly haunted places, our story here begins with violence and strife. The penitentiary of New Mexico, once a men's maximum security prison in Santa Fe Ca County, New Mexico, had already been a long his had already had a long history of turmoil and violence, as prisons do, yeah. even before it was to become ground zero for one of the most violent prison riots in the correctional history of the United States. Oh, great! All right. In 1922, one inmate was killed and several others injured when tower guards opened fire on rebelling prisoners who had refused to enter their cells. Okay. In 1953, inmates protesting the use of excessive force. Well, seized right prison seized, reform, yo. Seized a deputy wep seized a deputy warden Ralph Tahash and twelve guards and held them hostage. And the ensuing mayhem, guards would kill two inmates and wound a number of others, leading to the construction of a more secure main unit of the prison. Yet this was nothing compared to the nightmare that unfolded in February of 1980. In the early hours of February 2nd, 1980, guards entered dormitory E2 on the south side of the prison. And the door to the dormitory was accidentally left unlocked. Isn't that like prison guard 101? Yeah. Lock, lock doors. Lock it all. <laughs> lock. Th they just like willy nilly. And I almost feel like it automatically locks when you shut it. So they yeah. just didn't even shut you it. I think. I guess in the 80s too. I mean. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's going to have automatic shutting doors would be them. You know, maybe this was like an inside job. Because mm -hmm. that seems very convenient. Mm -hmm. in, other in, in another strange violation of safety <laughs> procedure, it would turn out that the, that the door to the hallway that led to the prison's control center was also left unlocked. And on top of this, there were only 15 <laughs> guards on duty watching over one 1,100 very grumpy inmates. Is this where Jeffrey Epstein was? Because this <laughs> sounds a lot like right. that scenario. Seriously. I mean, how many guards do they usually have? I don't know. And grumpy. What a weird term to... I think they're more than grumpy. Yeah. Well, and I mean, being a prison guard it would just be I, the most thankless. I know. Awful. They make no hardly no money. money. Yeah, not... They, mm, no. Yeah. I know, I know many prison guards, like, because we have some large prisons uh -huh. in this area, both female and male. And Ugh, yeah, yeah, it's a very much a thing. You couldn't job. pay me I, I wouldn't do it. It's so scary. Because I'd actually considered like after retiring, going and teaching. Mm -hmm. But that might be different too. Because I would think the people who sign up for classes, there are a lot of good people in prison. Yeah, for sure. Well, there are a lot of unjustly yes. convicted people in prison. Right. So, I, and good I, people that are in like statement. But I'm just saying situations. Yeah, but there are also some bad people in there. Yeah. So yes. Like, the worst of the worst. Yes. A lot of times. Yep. Well, maybe. I mean, and maybe they'd like, they, they, like, like, they'd be kind and cause yeah. they're like, oh, you're here to help me, yeah. not, like, yell at me. About exactly. What would your classroom management technique be? Probably Adult very similar to what I use now. <laughs> prisoners. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, help them get a, their GED. Yeah. Or high set. Why we got to change the name? I don't know. It was a perfect recipe for disaster, and when they saw their chance, prisoners long fed up with mistreatment, unsanitary living conditions, prison overcrowding, bad food, and inferior prison services rushed the guards, and havoc ensued. 
See, if you just treat them right, though, yeah. they might just, like, serve their time and then move on. Yes, and become productive members of society. Let's right. try to rehabilitate. During the very first two minutes, wait, during the very first two minutes, four guards had been taken hostage, and when inmates storm and when inmates stormed the main corridor, the guard on duty at the control center fled. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Leave <laughs> I me. did not sign up for this. No. I'm getting paid I am not dying here in an hour. This ain't happening. You'll make the same thing at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> right. Leaving behind mm. keys that would open most oh, of the whoops. prison gates and doors. <laughs> well, that was a big whoops. So there's really like a failure of training here. <laughs> yeah. I feel like what? Fu- Why are the keys just like not attached to you know, their body? They're on a big Why circle. I always imagine they have like the retractable, like the yeah. Thing I mean, or... maybe it was like, damn, these are heavy. I gotta take them off for a minute because there's probably like five hundred, yeah, and guess. they're all like skeleton keys. <laughs> You know? It's like, can we just get a normal key? They're like... A key fob, please. Right. right. I bet they have that now, right? I bet some don't. Oh, yeah, that's we, true. We do not put nearly as yeah. much money into prison. Not this prison. <laughs> no, for sure not that one. Hopefully it's no no longer operational. <laughs> well, when you're trying to make money, when prison is a business, you're yeah. not going to put money back into no. it. No, no. Because why would you? That it's, takes away from your profit. It's all about the bottom line. And you don't give a crap about people in there. They're bad. You know, that's your mindset, I'm sure gross like prisons should not be a business that's like the what's wrong with this country and yeah are there people who go to prison that should never get out mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ted Bundy. killers exist we we get that richard ramirez <laughs> edmund kempa like the but you know jeff redama there's others that you know whatever i got a different car jamie's like you're gonna be stupid stickers on this one are you i've really been browsing when i'm etsy i've really got my eye on it it's like this like mountain thing and it's like adventure is out there but then parenthesis it says but so are serial killers (laughs) i mean so yeah i may pull the trigger and buy it i don't know i just listened to morbid's coverage of of richard ramirez and i watched the night stalker documentary Mm -hmm. but ugh, again i was like uh, would like, you watch the season nauseous. of American Horror Story where they had him? No. Oh, I, think I really didn't like watch the, a lot of I think those. it was like the summer camp one. That one was actually a pretty good season. But yeah, they made him like all, his character all sexy and stuff. It's like Gross, Richard Ramirez nasty. was disgusting. Yeah, halitosis. He had the worst Mountain Dew mouth I have ever seen. He's it was sick. so gross. He, he was is not a try. And he had so many like groupies. I'm like, what? He got married to someone. Yeah, like, I'm like, who? Stop. Did he, they put him on their dental plan when they got married? I certainly He was so. like maybe the worst of the worst. Yeah. Nothing was off limits. Well, didn't even in like the documentary stuff they took, didn't they always talk about how bad he smelled all the oh, time? Oh yeah, his breath. Like yeah. he had halitosis. That was like, but I think they even said his BO was oh, because sure. he wasn't clean. Well, that's how they end up catching him because yeah, he had that rotten how, tooth. And how the victims described him. Yeah. Like and he kept trying to victims. go to the dentist, you know, and they were like <laughs> staking him out. But he is so nasty. Like, like we were talking earlier about taking pictures for medical purposes. I would feel like he would be like, okay, we will fix your teeth, but we got to document this crap yeah, first. Yeah, your whole face. And he wasn't even that old. How did your teeth get that bad? Well, they, I mean, they, I don't know. That might be said really... He ate like... That he only ate... Because they talked about this. That he only ate like junk food and yogurt. That's like all he ate. Even so, though. And never brushed your whole life? I guess. I mean... I Maybe that's just me showing my stupidity, too, of not living in poverty and stuff. But I just don't... I don't know. I mean, I just... he had a really screwed up childhood. Not that that's any... I mean, it's no excuse. But it, yeah. it it's, like, interesting to think the nurture versus nature piece. Because yeah. he had an uncle that served in Vietnam and came back and showed him photographs. At, he was... Richard was 12 of him killing and raping Vietnamese women. And he had, like... What's the... What's the... Polaroids? Photo? Thank you. Yes. And he showed it to him. And I'm like... Yeah, that's... What? Yeah. And then his uncle, I guess, was, like, knew what he was doing while he was doing it. Well, he probably was like, way to go. Yeah. Sick, man. Good job, Richie. Yeah. Can we, like... We need to flag these people better, yes, okay? Yes, 100%. <laughs> like, there needs to be a whole <laughs> task force of people across the country undercover. I mean, we can't even, like, I know. check on the people who are reported through the proper right. channels, let alone just... Right, Ted Bundy. <laughs> it's a guy named Ted. <laughs> Ugh, him too. So gross, man. Okay, um, sorry. But no, you're good. Let's see. Back to this with the, all the unlocked doors and keys. Um, what followed was a bloodbath. Mm. By all accounts, the inside of the prison became an absolute free-for-all for chaos and violence. 
that one reporter would later say was a merry-go-round gone crazy. What a really stupid way to say that. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't even make sense. And that's not even being clever. No. It makes zero sense. And it's Do like, they know what a merry-go-round is? Right? Have you never been on a merry-go-round? <laughs> and it's like rude to the people who died i'm sure people yeah. died. we haven't gotten there yet but i'm no, sure the merry-go-round is like whimsical and fun yeah this was none of those things oh wow prisoners ripped out the plumbing they pissed well, you're kind of hurting yourself doing that <laughs> yeah <laughs> just saying I mean, and, and why like cutting off your nose to spite your face yeah. that's not really why? like why i don't understand why are you ripping out the so how are you even angry. doing that? <laughs> yeah beating people with it maybe yeah. using it as a weapon i don't know all that pvc pipe uh, maybe. Well, or you think of like the ceramic sinks, how heavy. Oh, yeah. I wonder back then if the toilets were ceramic. Like now they're probably, not old, but... probably. Oh, these they're very strong. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Others raided the infirmary and took drugs with them. Yeah, with some of them flailing about, tripping balls. <laughs> wow, mysterious universe. Yeah. And others overdosing. Oh. Yikes. Well, I mean, they're probably used to what maybe you took on the outside and you haven't been using yeah. for a while, so you no. can't do that. While others still stalked and hunted their enemies down for revenge. Yikes. Full-on brawls were breaking out everywhere. Men were killed with, with piping, work tools, and crude homemade knives called shanks. Everyone knows that. One man was decapitated after being yeah. thrown over the second-tier balcony with a noose around his neck. Oh. Excuse me, what? How you put a, yeah. how you put a noose around someone's decapitated? No, no, yeah. no. He they put a noose on his neck and threw him over and when he when the noose got taut, he it decapitated decap- him. That's how I'm taking how it. How does that happen? Well, that's a lot of force. If you fall I, I far enough, you think throw about it. Hard. Yeah. Just physics. Oh God. Wow. They're very angry. After which the corpse was then dragged down and hacked up. Okay, wow. Uh, however, the worst was yet to come when inmates began using tools from the prison to gain access to cell block four, which was the protective segregation unit that held the snitches. Ew. Ooh, Sorry, dang. Keaton just texted me she won't be home. There, she's hanging out with friends, which I'm not going to discourage because she never does that. But I'm like, oh no. Paul said, Nay, we'll be alone with your dad until I get home. Well, we'll, we won't be home too long from now. Um, the ones that had gotten... Many of the other inmates locked up in the first place and were kept out of the general pop for their own safety. Yikes. I bet they were... I'm sorry, but I bet all those guys were back there like, No! <laughs> Dear God, no! Everyone be quiet! They'll forget <laughs> we're just, here! Just hide. Shh. Oh, my God. It's like that movie with Emily Blunt and John Krasinski. Oh, yeah. It was a movie. What's it called? The Quiet Place. Yeah, that's yeah. a good movie. Let's make the, this the quiet place, everyone. Oh, but it, I mean, they were tortured, dismembered, butchered, decapitated. Hey. Ugh, real bad. Burned alive. Okay. Oh, even worse. Yeah, how they got matches. In the meantime, 12 prison guards in total were taken hostage and fitful negotiations began be- to, between police and some of the inmate leaders. This went on for two days until the riot finally began to run out of steam and simmer down. And in the early afternoon of Sunday, February 3rd, National Guardsmen and police retook the prison without any violence. Too late for that. Yeah, what? that ship has sailed. <laughs> I know. I'm like, why do you even say that? In the aftermath of the riot, 33 prisoners were dead, most of them from the segregation unit, but amazingly, no guards had been killed. Hmm. Excuse me, what about the guy who got decapitated? Was he a prisoner? I guess. I guess so, yeah. It didn't say guard now that I look back at it. Um... Uh, shocked the nation, obviously. Uh, shortly after this, it was shut down and abandoned. Um, today, parts of it have been repurposed for other uses, and the sections of the prison still standing have often been used as sets for movies. Considering this black co- cloud of death and violence hanging over the place, it should perhaps come as no surprise that it's said to be intensely haunted. Just demolish it. Right, right. Like, like why leave it there? They can build a movie set. Yeah, right. Much of the phenomena here is rather typical of haunted prisons, like anomalous footsteps, flickering lights, the clanging of bars when no one's there, unexplained noises, including growls and screams, overwhelming feelings of evil and darkness, as well as unease and, the, and powerful fear. I mean, the Missouri State Penitentiary feels like that. Yeah. It gives you a stomach ache when you go in. Mysterious mists, the feeling of being watched and followed, the sound of cell doors slamming shut or disembodied voices whispering in the dark. Ooh. There are also spookier things reported from here. Okay. <laughs> Is there such a thing? Oh, reported the smell of burning flesh or rotting meat. Oh, oh no. my God. So sickening that visitors have been known to throw up or pass out. 
One commonly reported phenomenon is that of shadow figures that prowl the cells and corridors, often act acting rather aggressively and har actively harassing visitors. In one instance, a member of a film crew claimed that a human-shaped shadow stepped out of a cell and flicked a cigarette at him. <laughs> it's very passive-aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Oh, if I tried I... to flick a cigarette, it would fly right back in Same. my own face. They burn you. <laughs> you. But then it vanished, but left the cigarette butt on the floor smoldering. Another Ooh. film crew member reported that a shadow figure followed him into a bathroom and shoved him against a wall. Yikes. In another case, an extra on one movie set wandered off on his own. Are you dumb? Walked into a cell and had the door shut behind on him, <laughs> leaving him locked up. Oh, well, that yeah. lock worked. Well, that's why you don't go in a... No. Indeed, many of the reports of supernatural activity at the prison come from film crews. Um, okay. As one such report comes from actor Scott Patterson, who played the role of an army captain in charge of the prison in the movie... The Boys of Abu Gharab. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Patterson was there for a late night visit to the set to the site selected for filming the interior prison scenes, along with the producer for the film. And while they were there, they decided to visit the death row and the gas chamber. Along the way, they were spooked by the hack marks still marring the floor <gasps> from axes used to decapitate prisoners or the what? As well as a scorched mark from one of the fires. When they reached the gas chamber, they were surprised to find a single candle sitting there flickering in the darkness, which was incredibly odd as no one else was there. <laughs> you and think? You, and you wouldn't want a candle in the gas chamber. <laughs> and then Elton John steps on to start singing Candle in the Wind. <laughs> Your legend. Oh, my God. Remember when that song was like all you heard? Oh, my God. Yes. I distinctly remember hearing all of him on the freaking school bus. <laughs> what? Because we just listened to, like, ra the radio station. That song was constantly playing, it seems like. I was like, for the love of God. We're we, in America. Can I hear some too legit to quit by MC Hammer? So I don't know if that was the same time period. But... Well, that's just so sad and depressing. Yeah. We're like, st yeah. Wow. I just wanted to do the hand signals. Too legit to quit. <laughs> with your, like. Whatever happened to MC Hammer? With your. Pants, big pants. No, with your pants. overalls, one undone. Oh, yeah, one undone. Yeah. Always. Who needs two? My, my necklace with all the charms. <laughs> oh. The plastic ones, you know. It's amazing. <sighs> okay, well, that's great. And then they ran away, <laughs> it sounds like. Uh, they're like, that's weird. <laughs> Duh. What is happening? I can't scroll. Okay. The most intense area of the phenomena was reportedly cell block four, where most of those riot deaths occurred. Yep. The prison had become popular for urban explorers and ghost hunting crews and appeared on an episode of Travel Channel's Dead Files. Um, but not everyone's so convinced. Retired penitentiary guard Rick LaMonda, who now runs tours, says... Okay, blah, blah, blah. He doesn't think... We aren't interested in his skeptic opinion. Yeah, we don't care. Um... Can all this be explained in a rational, mundane way? No. No. It's haunted. There was a candle lit by itself. Right. This, no. You, I mean, I'm well, sorry. I'll hear what you have to say whenever your name was. Sir? Richard or something. LaMonda. And also, like, I'm sorry. If all that happens in a place, it ain't just going to be normal yeah. afterwards. No. And if a place is going to be haunted... It's going to be a place that has had All a that. ton of violence and yes. sadness and despair. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. You know, That's so all. It just goes without saying. So, anyway. Right. Thanks for listening. Well, this was uplifting. <laughs> <laughs> Do you love hearing about prison riots? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Give the people what they want. Oh, sorry, everyone. <laughs> Go eat some Girl Scout cookies or something. Yes. I don't know. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>